Hey! Yeah, All right, we're here. We're live. This is uh, a. Wait a second. This is not Steve. Who is this person? <laughs> Who is this person in the room right now with me? It's a me. It's a Mario. Yes, yes. By the way, um, we have a special guest. He's off camera right now, but we'll be bringing him in just a minute. You guys already know because we spilled beans for you, obviously, because that's what we do here. Um, but yeah, so how's everyone doing? I hope everyone's doing good in the chat. I see everyone's super happy. We do have a special guest here, Mr. Austin in the building who uh Woo -woo. we kind of just like steal once in a while and bring them in and just like hey i feel know, like i live here now you honestly yeah you pretty much do um which is okay i think right i mean are you okay with that living here yeah it's fine just it's comfortable. feed me feed it's, me it's comfortable you know so yeah we'll feed you honestly, i think yeah, i think you'll like it um but yeah so uh without further ado man i don't want to waste any time because uh the man's very busy and he has stuff to do and uh and whatnot but you know what i'm gonna let you austin bring him in since uh you know you you were so gracious to um reach out to him and uh have him come on board so uh i think you have uh some type of i'm doing uh, you know bringing people in and out of uh scenes and stuff like that i don't even know like twitch maybe i don't know i know you have another career that you <laughs> use a microphone once in a while so oh yeah, just, yeah that thing that thing yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. um uh, call of man Duty. yeah now now i wish i had listened to drew all, when he was trying to change his introduction before with the fighting out of the oh god what was it fighting out of the red corner maybe or blue oh, oh. text me drew text me send it to me <laughs> Cause now I want to now I want to do the one that I can't ever do in the ring. I want to do the one I can't ever do in the ring because that's the one I want to do. Um, but I don't know because I don't think he can hear us now, can he? Yeah, he can hear us. Yeah, yeah, he All can right. hear us. He's there. Yeah, yeah. He's not. Uh, yeah. Let's see if he. Let's see, Drew. If you can hear me right now, send yeah. me the text message or just <laughs> tell me what it was. Fighting out of the blue corner, or fighting out of the red corner. I can't remember what you wanted it to be. Fighting out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Was that what it was? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Making his way to the Fantastic Duo Show, fighting out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Drew Gulak. There he is, everyone. And he's uh, officially in the Fantastic Duo Show. He's here. Hey. Uh, i like that he even I like gets he some music yeah he even gets the uh the the treatment there um so yeah man so welcome to the show thank you for for coming on here with us uh we really appreciate it yeah thank um, you yeah man so uh i mean austin do you have any questions for him or should i just ask all the questions being like the the fan i mean if, if you have a question a quick, i got a quick question yeah do it question. um on the stream there's like a rectangle on my face. I'm removing that right now. I don't even know why that's on. <laughs> wow. Wow, Alex. Wow. Oh. I don't know if you wanted to frame me up like in here or something. You, you know, got to put your eyes. You got to put your eyes like in Like a window. It's a special box. window. You want yeah, like yeah. knocking sound you know, effects. You know what it was? It's like it's, Narnia. <laughs> it's, the fact, it's the fact that, uh, yeah, that pretty much everything just started uh, a little later than usual. But I got you. I'm going to bring you know, you while you do that, I'm just going to say, dude, how have you been, man? Like. Hey. You're on. You're on. I, you're on a separate brand. I never no, see you anymore. We no. used to take photos every Monday, and now yeah. I can't do that. How are you, dude? I'm great, thanks. How are you? Not too bad, you know. Just yeah. uh, hanging out on Mondays. Our uh, our podcast dreams have been dashed. They have been dashed. What happened? We just we started. For those of you who don't know, Drew and I actually talked about doing a uh, a podcast a long time ago, and I think it was when we. I think we finally Remember? like decided in Saudi Arabia, yep. I think is where we, we were sitting on a boat yep. in the middle of the, was it the Red Sea? It was the Red Sea. We were in the middle of the Red Sea and we're like, dude, we should do this. And so we dropped this teaser like, hey guys, we're going to do this thing. And we're on a boat and all this, whatever. <laughs> and I think like the next week we were in uh, a random city. I can't, I think it was Austin, Texas, actually, uh, if I remember correctly, because I, I was trying to remember the way that Memory. whole laid out. And we found this hallway and we set up a oh, microphone yeah. and all this stuff. We did one. And we did, yeah, I think we recorded some stuff. Yeah, and talked. was there. I remember that. We talked all this stuff. And then I think somebody like walked by and they're like, hey, you, get, you guys doing a, you guys doing a podcast? <laughs> I got like, a phone call later on. They're like, are you and Drew doing a podcast? I'm like, nah, we just, we're just testing stuff. And the thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think someone else said something to me that I think it was the same person. They were like, you should totally do this. And they were excited about it. 
Interesting. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Crazy how that works. Yeah. Remember that boat ride on the, in the Red Sea? Oh my <laughs> the, God. The princess's dude. boat ride. Yeah. So we went on. So in like Saudi Arabia, like before we went there, they were talking about all this basically like, Hey, don't go in an elevator with this. Don't do this. Don't do that. All this stuff we couldn't do. And uh, so we went on this activation where we were in basically this van, they took us there and they took us out in the middle of nowhere. It was kind of like, so it was like, this is weird. And these like uh, this, everything was like gated. So you never saw anybody's house because there was all these huge fences. And so we came in and it was like almost like a warehouse and the doors open. We drove into this thing. and It was this house that was sitting on the water (laughs) and the house wasn't like anything spectacular, but there was this boat in the back. And on the way to the vote, there was like um, vendors selling or giving food, and there was a VR set up. And Do you like remember what it was? Which one, the VR or like all that stuff with the vendors and the VR and the yeah? Do you remember what that was? What was it? They made I remember par- they made a party for the WWE superstars that were coming to visit them. That's right. What was what was the food that was there? I all can't right. remember. So, so hold on before <laughs> before we get into like the delicacies of this insane experience we had. Um, my perspective of everything was got off the plane to Saudi Arabia, however many hours that was. Uh, got to the hotel. Finally went up to my hotel. Like got changed from being on a plane for like seventeen hours. Then went yep. down into the lobby just for a second. And um, John Cohn from Talent Relations goes. Hey, Drew, uh, a bunch of the wrestlers uh, decided they weren't going to go to this appearance. Do you want to go on a boat with the princess? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, yes, I do. Of course I do. <laughs> oh, no sleep. Like, Absolutely. And uh, I grabbed Tony Nice randomly and told him the same thing. He's like, yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's do it. So me and Tony Nice, we were in the company for like one year. We were in just the cruiserweight division. Never been. I mean, we were on Raw and SmackDown, uh, Raw, Raw at the time for like a little bit of feature, but like out of the list of superstars, we were definitely like bottom five, <laughs> just, just in, na- in name value. <laughs> so they had set up, we, we got into a Jeep. We had no idea where we were going, drove around like uh, the coast of Jeddah and then up the Red Sea to that house that you just mentioned. I didn't even know that you were going to be there. I guess you were covering it for social. I didn't see, I didn't know you guys were going to be there because the yeah. day before, cause I was there a day before or two oh. days before you guys. So the day before that, they actually took me out to old Jetta. So I got to see, actually, I like weaseled my way into that thing. Cause they were filming in there and they did not want me. They were so upset. And then when I got there, they were fine, but yeah. they were like, he's just, I was like, I just want to take pictures. I don't want to be a part of this shoot. Like, I just want to see something <laughs> that I'm never going to see ever again. So I'm walking around old Jetta, like taking photos. And then they were really cool after that. And then the next, that's when they were like, Hey, we have an activation tomorrow that we think you'd be perfect for. Um, it's with a princess and a boat. And I was like, yeah, cool. Let's do it. And they're like, I, I, I think it's, they were like, literally everybody's going to be there. All the people that are at the Royal dinner all this stuff it's it's what it's gonna be i was like oh cool whatever and so then when i get in the van and it's like oh yeah everybody bailed it's uh it's true <laughs> and now i was like cool with me i'm good with it cwc yeah exactly the cruiserweight classic dudes <laughs> from like new york independent scene and philly independent scene are visiting one of the princesses of saudi arabia and we had to do this thing where like we greeted her on camera so like we had to like do a very formal like hello and a handshake and everything and right and she's expecting like probably the rock and like stone cold steve austin and like the big show and kane and the undertaker and instead it's me and tony niece (laughs) (laughs) so they have and right and you were there to cover it and (laughs) and uh Oh my god, dude! It was so crazy. They had so what did they set up for us? They set up like ice cream vendors. And, yeah. Like, there was a guy making like pancakes with like special treats on. That's them. what it was. It was like, what was yeah. that one dude? I kept going back to it. <laughs> it looked like a kid's birthday party. Honestly, it looked it, like a little really carnival did. setup from like yeah. it, like your super rich neighbors, and they like get the like blow up inflatable thing and all that's yeah. like. That's what it, kind of what it felt like, but it was weird because so by the, we got on the boat and everything was like super formal and like everybody's just being like, oh, and they have masks on and then the camera shut off and it was like, let's go on the boat and have some fun. <laughs> Everybody stopped being formal. So we go out there and we're in the ocean and like that thing is just wrecking the ocean, Dude, man. Yeah. Yeah. They let us drive the boat in the Red Sea. <laughs> so like, Oh, nice. At one point we're on the front of this thing and like going over wakes, just like flopping up and down in the Ritz, just us, you know, they figured that, yeah, it's just, it's so surreal. Um, (laughs) Yep. Good times. And then we wanted to do a podcast and uh, 
then we got moved to different brands right after. Yeah, that. never happened. It never, it never, it never came to fruition. Unfortunately, well, that's oh. that's a good, that's a great way uh, to start the pot, the the show today. You know what I'm saying? Okay. What a nice little story, you know, and letting everyone know everyone's uh, digging it on the chat room, so it's all good. And uh, so yeah, so anybody who's just joining right now and asking where Steve is, Steve is um, about thirty seven thousand feet up in the air right now. Sitting in uh, first class. Sitting in first class, <laughs> heading out to um, to London. He's uh, making a move across the pond. Uh, enough is enough, and it's time for a change. Probably said, not nah, really. He just he just up and left. Man, his girl's living over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he just <laughs> took you that know, uh, obligatory like first class, all that legroom photo. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he made sure that the stewardess took it for him too. Um, so yeah, so you know, <laughs> um, happy to have uh, Austin here, and of course, once again, for anybody who just joined, Drew Gulak sitting here in the building with us. They just shared a kick-ass story of a time in Jeddah. I can't, <laughs> I can't share most of my stories from the time over there because it was during turmoil. Uh, 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 Drew, a little bit about me. I'm, uh, what? I'm a retired Marine, so oh, uh, yeah, so I, I spent time over there during uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom. So yeah, thank you for your service. Thank you, sir, for that. So yeah, so um, you know, what was your was, job over there? I was motor T operator, but when you're that, you do absolutely everything. Else. You know, oh, you wow. never, you're never really just the one thing. You're uh, stirring the shit pots, you know, making sure they're. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing absolutely everything, but yeah, man. Hey. But we, 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 uh, we, we had a good time, especially when WWE came around. So, um, when they had the tribute for the troops, when they were actually there, oh, you yeah. know, like like when they were allowed to go on on to the bases. But yeah, so uh, really quickly, I'm pretty sure you've told us a thousand times, but um. How how did you get into the uh, wrestling business? Like, what attracted you to this uh, to, to this business? You know, like I, I'm pretty trying sure to be a wrestler. Yeah, because you know what? It, it's funny, right? Trying to get in. Yeah, um, a lot of people, a lot of people, um, you got to be. They say you got to have some type of like, uh, like like love skill. for to get the love skill. You got to take bumps. You know, all of this stuff gotta that happens. Got to be seven feet tall and full you, of muscles. Yeah, yeah. You got to be. <laughs> you can't fit through the door. You kind of got to look like Austin a little bit. You know. So, yeah, super, <laughs> super jacked. Oof, I gotta stop working out. Oh. But yeah, we'll, I would love to hear the story, man, really quickly if you yeah. have to let us know. Yeah. Um. So I was I grew up a wrestling fan in Philadelphia. Um. Ever since I was little, I watched it. I would throw drop kicks in like my backyard at my brother, just messing nice. around, thinking like if they can do it on TV, it won't hurt. And then just smashing into the ground and like getting up super, you know, in super pain, like my hips and stuff were all blown out. Yeah, drop kick, right? Super basic move. You see it on TV all the time. Don't try it at home. Just don't, don't try it at home. Um, when I was about fourteen or fifteen, I had a teacher in middle school um, who had a picture of King Kong Bundy. Ooh. just sitting on the chalkboard like in the front and we'd talk about wrestling and uh he started telling me about this company called combat zone wrestling czw i knew what ecw was you know famous for like the hardcore matches being in philly like i knew what that was um but i never heard of czw he's like this is better <laughs> and uh what that meant was you sit next to the ring. There is no guardrail to keep you for, keep someone from flying into your chair. <laughs> People are flying through tables and glass and lighting each other on fire. And you're oh getting sprayed with glass. Blood is flying into the crowd every once in a while. But at the same time, they had not only like the crazy hardcore wrestling, but they had like the most acrobatic wrestlers in the world at the time. They had like a 17 year old, uh, amazing red. If you know who he is from his time in TNA. Yeah. Uh, they had very young version of the Briscoe brothers who are like ring of honor. Legends wow. Yeah. Um, guy named ruckus who was like 300 pounds and he would do all these tricks and stuff in the ring. And like, it was just mind blowing the amount of wrestling that I just like got blasted in the face with at the age of 14. That's crazy. And uh, I just remember thinking back in that crowd, I was like, you know what? These guys, they, they're not much older than me. Like, I'm, I, I got to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just attended independent shows through CZW for a couple of years. Eventually, like me and my brother, we got asked to go and join the ring crew. Uh, so we started learning how to break down a ring and set it up. We were still, in, I was in high school. He was in middle school. Um, and then I joined the wrestling school at the age of 16. Wow. And uh, started training right after that and uh yeah i had my first match at the age of 17 in my high school wow so i would go from i would go from like high school wrestling practice to this yeah small building East. in deptford new jersey and uh get beat up by a bunch of angry guys for a little <laughs> bit yeah 
and uh that's just that's how i broke in so like, well, i got in through the local independent scene and like a wrestling school and time was different back then too like you know you could get into wrestling school that young age because i remember training in uh jersey all pro uh i'm from jersey so i remember doing some oh, nice. stuff there yeah so with i'm fat frank yes with fat frank yes yeah. yes oh my god so i'm i'm 37 yeah, years old so pour one out for fat yes frank. yes I'm, i have water here i can't pour it on my computer then i'm fucked but um yeah, but please yeah. do <laughs> please do do it do it. I'm just i'll do it for the stream <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah you 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 can't be much older than i am you got to be younger than me right you got you're 35 36 years old probably so like you we probably you probably he, he made a face like he's younger than that are you younger than that seriously you yeah, mentioned all three oh you're 33 oh, okay so you're four years younger than me okay uh, he's like I seriously start, you're I'm younger like, than that no i, yeah, I started, I started you look so old. old no no it's the fact that you've been in the business and you've done so much like you know yeah. your matches are insane i'm pretty sure the Thanks. people in the chat room could uh could attest to that as well i have some i have some of my chatters actually joining us tonight which is kind oh, of nice beautiful in the stream yeah children of gulak uh cinnamon for the, you guys i love that thank you man yes. we really appreciate that here on the show and i'm pretty sure steve would yeah. say the same thing uh, from thirty-seven thousand feet above the earth um but yeah and they want to know about your powerpoint so how'd you come across doing that was that a <laughs> original idea that you just kind of just like said i'm put this together and put it up there i mean i've been a long a lifelong advocate for change <laughs> uh, you know, uh especially in the wrestling industry which i'm so passionate about and um at first, uh, in, in Combat Zone Wrestling, which we talked about, is known for their hardcore and violence and disregard of the rules. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I wasn't about that life at the time. and did everything I could to kind of lead people in the right path of uh, no hardcore wrestling for a better CZW. And, uh, you know, that's I've had some successes with that. I've had some failures with that. And uh, somehow along the way, I got picked up for the Cruiserweight Classic uh, with WWE. And um, at the time, I was with a stable called Catchpoint and Evolve. I was uh, championing the traditions of wrestling in a slightly different way. Um, that's what got me into the company. And then shortly thereafter that, they started a show called 205 Live. Mm -hmm. And 205 Live was meant to be a cruiserweight-only show. You had to be 205 pounds or less. Uh, it was honoring the um, inspirational cruiserweights of the past with the new cutting-edge cruiserweights of today and tomorrow. Um, you know, because in the history of wrestling, for the wrestling fans in the chat and you, as you know, um, you know, cruiserweight wrestling, or they were like the, the trendsetters. Oh, of course. You know, always, always like agreed all the way through the history of wrestling. Like that was it. That was what what, you know, set the tone. And um, I got to be a part of that. And I realized that some people were taking things a little too far in the cruiserweight division. So I decided to campaign for a better 205 lot. <laughs> um Cause you know, it's, it's my strong point. And just, you know, I had a, I had a megaphone at certain times and I would come out and make sure people could hear me, you know, on the PA and, and in the house. And, uh, I, I would have picket signs and stuff to kind of like make sure they can get the message across. And, and of course that led to me conducting a very formal PowerPoint presentation, which That's I had paid amazing. for at the time, um, which I never got past the third or fourth slide. <laughs> <laughs> I think just because of time constraints and like right. people get impatient, but like I, I had a range for these things to, you know, to fill up the broadcast. I was promised that I could do the whole presentation. Um, now, did you ever get sponsored by Microsoft? That's the question. So I am affiliated. With wow. Microsoft. Oh. So you're in an uh, Excel Specifically person? PowerPoint. Oh, PowerPoint. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. For PowerPoint. The no fly um, zone. Excel's, not, Excel's nice. It's, it, it's good, but you can do that all in PowerPoint. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That's pretty yeah. cool, man. Like you can do everything actually. And you obviously like, and I'm pretty sure you mentioned this before, but I was reading the chat. You you created the idea for the PowerPoint, and it and it was just like, it was it, that's that's like pretty dope because you know that means you have. Uh, did you have any other ideas that you probably could get out back out there? Like, do you have anything creative that you can share with us? Or is Alexis, something... my brother. <laughs> or is it something, or is it the, something amount, that... the amount of ideas that are that have been tossed around. Oh. Uh, are enormous. And say um, no, one of the ones, say no here, more. I'll, sh I'll, sh I'll share a fun <laughs> one with you because I don't know if, if, uh, if I'll ever get a chance to do it or if it if it makes sense. Sure. It's kind of it's kind of like that backstage though. There's so many ideas that people like throw yeah, out that if in a given day in general on a SmackDown Raw That's NXT, insane. there's probably like 30 ideas for each person that gets thrown out. Not to mention the ones from creative or whatever. And you yeah. know maybe one will make it through every once in a while. But it's it's interesting how many 
how how much these guys actually come up with and are actively thinking about cha- like doing new things. Or- yeah, I think one of the coolest lessons that I've learned being in WWE um, to that point is like if you're in Hollywood or a TV show or writing a show or a movie or anything like that, is that part of the creative process of working with a group of people is that you have to be okay with the idea of having an idea one time and just letting it go. Right. And yep. uh, what what I take from those experiences is like a lot of guys get they, they take personal offense to like when an idea isn't used or if it's not, you know, if it's great and it just doesn't happen, or if they get told it's not good enough, like guys, guys can get offended to that because you're taking a part of yourself and you're putting it out there and it's either getting rejected or getting changed or whatever. I think um, a good way to combat that for anyone who's in a creative field like that with a group is that have your ideas, right? Right. And if it doesn't get used, that's a gift because what's going to happen is there's going to be another opportunity down the line to do something uh, like that or to do that idea exactly you just it might take a different shape a different form whatever like table it pocket it put it in a book like that's been really rewarding for me because it's a big book at this point you know? <laughs> <laughs> um one of, one of the ideas that i'll share with you since you were asking it was kind of fun was that uh, i had the idea that at the time if i was campaigning my ideal wrestlemania entrance i don't know if you're familiar with like how crazy the entrances are at wrestlemania usually uh when they're in stadiums and stuff um since I was campaigning for a better 205 Live, I had the idea of, uh, in story, bringing on a mascot version of myself oh who would my help God. me champion ideas. <laughs> so like, I'd be standing there with the megaphone on the side, and then there'd also be the mascot, Drew, who'd be standing there with the megaphone on the side. Yeah, big head and everything like that. But some point down the line in the story, uh, for the WrestleMania entrance, I would have had a marching band playing my theme music, leading the way, with a giant parade float where I could stand on it with the mascot in the front waving oh my. Uh, with a giant parade balloon version of myself floating through the air. Oh my God. Logos and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the craziest idea. Of <laughs> Can we get this to happen? But in the grand scheme of WrestleMania, no, like, you can't have it happen. You got to, you got to table it and pocket it. Oh, got it. That's great. In the grand scheme of WrestleMania ideas, though, it's not really that crazy. It's crazy, but when you think of how crazy WrestleMania can get and all the things that we've seen and the things that have happened, it's really not, it's pretty doable. I mean, we had a damn roller coaster going around an arena that (laughs) ended up on the top, like, and and then that pathway that was literally like two miles long, like, anything is possible. Oh Anything. yeah, I mean, I mean, look what yeah. I mean. Wizards, what they Terminators. did with, with what they did with the Royal Rumble <laughs> as well. It's insane. You know what I'm saying? Like just the the sheer amount of creativity that they could do around stadiums is just why not? You know, I think that you should open up SoFi Stadium for WrestleMania next year with your float. If they don't do that, it'd be pretty upset. You know what I'm saying? Just saying. Never say never. Never, never say never. Say never. Um, another thing that uh, that has been coming up on the chat, and I I'm I'm a I'm a big fan of wrestling as well. Been watching since I was a kid. Um, is your matches with uh, Daniel Bryan amazing? Oh, like step you. step by step, you guys just like it was like a, a a true wrestling clinic on the ring, man. And I know Thanks, like man. that's missing now in professional wrestling, right? Say is louder. The, that is missing now in professional wrestling. The yeah, actual type it up and tweet it for the, everyone. And the tag, act, w, tag Vince McMahon. Let him know the, what's missing. In uh, what's you know. And tell them Austin Romero sent you. I'm not here. <laughs> he doesn't know who Austin Romero is. It's fine. <laughs> He'd be like, who? Yeah. I don't know who that is. He doesn't own that name. <laughs> but it's 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 honestly true. The wrestling has gone a little bit on the wayside. You kind of see uh, some specs of it, like. Um, uh, with Rey Mysterio's son kind of like coming to the ring now and doing some really cool Big old dumb. school cruiserweight. Yeah. Um, reminds me of the uh, the olden days of WCW, you know, but but you have that in you. And I think that, man, this should just let you go all out when it comes to um, telling that story in the ring the way you and, and Daniel did. But yeah, just I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But yeah, that's my my uh, 10 cents on it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Austin is biting his his finger. He's leaving. He's putting his away screen. I don't know what's yeah, happening Michael over Cole there. Is texting him right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> um, but yeah. So besides the <laughs> wrestling arena, have you ever thought? I mean, you know, you you guys are basically um, also have ways of. And I'm not saying you're actors. Like you guys are great at what you do and in, in performance, 
you know, performing in the ring. So, like, you ever thought about being an actor as well, like, you know, dipping your feet in that field? So, I mean, I've never, I I did, like, plays and stuff growing up. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had fun doing that, um, making movies with my friends. I actually went to film school for a couple Get of years. Get out of here. Drexel. Nice. Yeah, I went to Drexel University for film uh, while I was in wrestling. Um, but, like, that that never interested me as much. Like, I would love to do it. It would be fine. But um, voice acting actually yes. is something that I've been way more interested in um, lately, especially just as like exploring options in the future and stuff. We need to talk. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we, we do we can... all the time. <laughs> you yeah, we need to talk you, about that. You and Austin okay. and, and Steve should get together because, you know, Steve knows a shit ton of people in the industry that do the voice, you know, like, um, yeah, obviously all the Power Rangers have voice some type of um, besides doing ADR they do have for voices. themselves. <laughs> yeah, they pretty much have they voices. <laughs> <laughs> so they pretty much uh, have done that. So oh, that's another thing. Are Tell us a little bit about your, uh, your your growing up, pop culture wise. Um, were you a Power Ranger fan growing up? Was it something that you watched uh, um, at all, or was it you just kind of stayed away from the like the crappy acting? Uh, how dare you? <laughs> okay, great. That's all I need to how, hear. How dare you? <laughs> Do you a- realize the hard job that they had to like piece that show together and then create a <laughs> compelling story? Do you have any idea? The like they took footage that was like what is it, ten years old, and they had to make a show for an entire generation <laughs> of kids. Not just that. Hold on. Let's not just Cut a generation promo. of kids. Cut the promo. <laughs> this is you guys don't even understand, right? Power Rangers changed like television. It changed. It changed television in America. It changed it, and and on top of that, it changed like how. That's a nice title. <laughs> it changed like how I'm kids man behave and kids watch things and like people growing up. So my generation, I was part of Gen One. Uh, yes, the original Mighty Morphin age. Um, I remember the first season. I would have to get home from school in time to watch the new episode and get to school the next day to talk about it with my friends. Um, and this is another thing too, because I realize a lot of people in the chat are probably a little young. Young, yeah, or yeah. It's just what Twitch is. Um, I talk about this lately a lot with like my wrestling students, with people in general about social media. And yes. uh, one, one thing I want to touch on real quick is like you guys watching at home on the, on the channel, you can pick up your phone, whatever you want. Right. And go on Netflix or YouTube. So easy um, now. So easy. <laughs> and you flip through it real quick. Cause attention spans dwindle. The more you have control over this, but this, this device right here has replaced the devices that we grew up with, which was just TV. Right. That's it. So, the way TV works, right, is that you have a TV show on at 4.30 on Fox, which was Power Rangers, yeah, yeah. and you had to wait until that time to go home and watch it, and all it was was me sitting there and listening and observing the program, right? I couldn't talk to the program and get feedback from it. I couldn't, you know, have a conversation with Rita as much as I wanted to. <laughs> um, Maybe. And, yeah, or, or, yeah, just to yell at her. Um, but it wouldn't matter, even if I did. It would not have mattered, Right. I had to go to school the next day and hopefully my friends liked the same parts of the episode that I Yes. Liked. Yeah, yeah. You know? Or if they watched it, sometimes if you missed it it was there was no going back and watching it like no, unless it came out on spoiled. VHS you were like screwed. Yeah. Or I know. Or, or you taped it. Or you taped it. We would tape it. That would be a thing. I remember I definitely taped some Power Rangers episodes. <laughs> um I'm really happy to hear then that you know you uh you loved all this stuff growing up as well. Yeah. Uh, a, a favorite, you know, obviously you grew up with, the, like you said, the Gen 1 Power Rangers. So do you remember any specific uh, um, episodes or anything like that that stand out the most to you that you, till today you're like, damn, that was freaking amazing. You rewatch yeah. now and you get that home feeling, you know? So any, if anything from the, from the first couple seasons I watched, nice. like, I'll get that, I'll get that feeling. Uh, the one that always jumps to mind is the one with the pachinko machine. Cause that was <laughs> yes. the most bizarre episode. Rocky wants ever. to have fun, you know? <laughs> but like but we didn't know what a pachinko machine no, was from the states you right. know so like years later getting to go to japan and actually play them like in the parlors and stuff that was really cool but that's like i'm a wrestler going to japan i should be thinking about like chris benoit dean malenko you know like these guys who were legendary wrestlers for their time you know and got to do these kinds of journeys and you know chris jericho and those guys like that's what i should be thinking about no I went to the video game arcade. There happened to be pachinko machines. And I'm like, it's the thing from Power Rangers. Yeah, and, nice. Yes. <laughs> so thank, thank you. Thank you, Ernie's Juice Bar. for the Ernie's Juice Bar. R.I.P. Ernie. 
every time, every time <laughs> I go to Japan, like every time, and it's funny because Shinsuke and Tazawa always, Tazawa not so much, but um, Oscar, <laughs> Oscar and Shinsuke will always be like, "Oh, you." You you go you go Super Sentai and I said yes <laughs> I go to course. find Super Sentai and I'm and they're like they're always like it's but it's it's little kid I was like no 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 big kid big kid but <laughs> Zawa was huge the last time I went out there he actually like researched all this stuff and found me these stores so like Shin gave me a quadrant of Tokyo and Osaka to check out so I was like walking around for hours but. Tozawa like narrowed it down, showed me the places go, gave me the exact locations and everything. Dude, nice. I, I that nice. last time I came back was so much like Common Rider and like <laughs> uh, uh, Super Sentai stuff. It was insane, and everybody's like, "Let's go to the steakhouse." Uh, what is that steakhouse called? Ribera. Ribera. I was like, "No, nah, I want to go search for all this stuff. I want to go to the Power Rangers place." <laughs> I was the same way. Cause that's like, that's the whole reason why I want to go to Australia. I've been booted off that tour every single time, but I want to go to Australia oh. because I want to see the locations from the movie. That's right. That's awesome, oh. man. You should, you should. Oh, by the way, Drew, I got, I got a question from the crowd here. So I'm going to be like jumping in yes. and out of the crowd. Crowd questions. Yes. Uh, when you, when you decide to retire from being an in-ring performer, uh, will you stay in the industry or work on something outside of the industry? Other projects. I get asked that a lot. Um, so the way that I wrestle in the ring and the way that I've been able to like avoid injuries and just try to be safe, I think I could wrestle for a long time. So I have no plans right now to kind of leave the wrestling side of stuff. I don't want to do that. I've been asked backstage about possibly transitioning into the announcing aspects of things oh, wow. or, or the producing aspects of things uh, or the training aspects of things. But anytime someone comes to me with this stuff, I'm just like, up, 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 up. I'm a wrestler. I'm Not a wrestler. Yet. Got it. <laughs> uh, it is, guys. There's your answer. Yeah, but it's a it's a weird crossover though. Like a lot of people don't understand. Like once you step over from wrestling to like commentary or something like that, for some reason a switch. I feel like a switch flicks, and they forget. They remember when you when they need you to reference something. If it's like, oh yeah, back when I was uh, work this guy, blah 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 blah, to use it in commentary. But they forget that you're a worker, so to bring you back, like to go people come over but they never really cross back into the other side uh when it goes like that it's just a, it's a weird uh vortex i feel like i think that's due to there not being so many you know yeah like and and when you do have someone who has actual like michael gold can tell me all day that like oh he's got him in an arm bar his arm is hurting you know there's no way that michael cole can put me in an arm bar and know how to apply that hole correctly you know like that's the kind of expertise that like we bring to the table is like yes i have been pile driven through tables off of the side of the ring onto a concrete floor Damn. no offense byron saxon i know you wrestled for a little bit in fcw but i did all that stuff so like there's ways you know that that's why i think it's it's like once they get that chance they're like oh please stay with us you know yeah yeah that's, I, that's a good point and, and 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 it's also you have like the hall of fame guys who bring the older experience like oh back in my day we did this whatever <laughs> and then you have i wasn't calling anybody specifically <laughs> oh, out, God. i just went into that voice because oh i've automatically i think a booker and i don't know why <laughs> I don't know why. Was your Booker T impression? I don't know, but it sounded like it's like yo dog. I don't know. That's I don't better. know what's happening. <laughs> That's <way better. laughs> so, uh, and then you've got the newer guys who have actually worked some of the guys in the ring that are currently going. So those like Aiden English was like a perfect example of yeah. that. Like he is somebody who had worked with some of those guys. So like, oh yeah, when I worked this guy or when I had this match at you know WrestleMania with them, they did this X, Y, and Z. These are you know, it, it helps to have that uh, current on that side. So that makes a lot of sense. I could definitely see that. Yeah. So if you cross over, we're never letting you go back. So just remember that. Well, the one who has to sign the deal. That's true. That's true. Uh, they also want to know how was it like being thrown by Braun Strowman? Sucked. He's very yeah. strong. Uh, I hear a lot of it people sucked. say that about everything that Braun Strowman, like, you know, power slamming them is you're going to feel it. You know what I'm saying? Um, love the shirt, yeah. by the way. Thank really, you. really. Uh, Enjoying the what is this guy? I did have? Look at this I did guy. represent. Look at this guy. He has uh what do you have over there, Austin? The Bill and Ted. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Is, yeah. No, I am too young for this generation. I just Where's I found this, this I found this at a vintage store for two dollars. So I'm wearing it, you know. Thing. Uh what are you wearing, Alex? What is that? Is that some kind of like uh that's weird. Yeah. yeah. yeah I've never I seen know. that before. Never seen that one before. It's odd that they use yellow. That it is that a, it's supposed to be a pigeon or something? Yeah. Uh 
Pigeon Man, I believe it, it's so a motorcycle yeah. gang shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Oh my Austin, god! Did you have? Did you have the flashlight? The yellow flashlight that had the. Oh yeah, the of course I did. Okay, cool, bro. Yeah. That's why, like, I was talking. Never was bright talking, enough. <laughs> it wasn't, and it was. I was telling somebody. Um, I got the uh, one of my favorite pieces in my office is my official bat signal that finally released. Um, and I remember seeing it. And I'm like, oh my God, I want this. And then it popped up somewhere on sale and I bought it instantly. And then it got lost and then it took forever to ship to me. And I finally got it. And I remember the first day I got it, I put it in the office and I turned it on. I was like, Vanessa, Vanessa. And she's like downstairs, like <laughs> cooking dinner. And I'm like, Vanessa. And she's like, what? I'm like, come up here. It's important. She comes up here and she's like, <laughs> what and i'm like it's the bat signal and she's oh, like oh my god i'm gonna go back downstairs and i'm like you should be excited about this <laughs> i was hoping you'd be dressed up like batman like in the side of the room like waiting. i did i think i posted a photo on instagram i had my cowl on and i was like looking up like that as it's bad <laughs> you can't my help love, it can't i love her it. batman is just is just never ending what are you supposed to do not put on the bat suit <laughs> and observe the bad signal like i'm just saying you know so sometimes true. with the city when gotham needs you gotham needs you that's all i'm yes. saying you've, you've never seen austin and uh and batman standing next to each other ever if i if i if i remember right you know what i'm saying i know that uh <laughs> pattinson's got covid now if they need a stand in there you go yeah how do you how do you feel about that uh if do you fan... look like him from the back <laughs> <laughs> There oh, it no, is. Look at that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Pat, Pat and Nailed with a it. Sick fade. Nailed it. <laughs> that sick maestro's classic. Uh, your hair needs to be longer. No, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. Smear it's fine. some black eye makeup and you'll be fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you feel about that, uh, uh, Drew, with the whole um, Batman Year Two storyline that they're bringing up? Uh, are you a fan of the of of Batman? Yeah, um, of course. And uh, so, like, I know a lot of people are already mentioning that he just doesn't look like a Batman doesn't, I mean, they're not even giving it a chance. They're basing it off of uh, what they've seen so far, but what, what are your feelings about uh, Mr. Patton being uh, the next Batman, Mr. Bruce uh, Wayne? There? I can't wait to see it. I feel like a lot of the, the feedback that I'm hearing from fat from the fan base is very similar to like what Christian Bale got when he first yeah. came on as Batman. You know, Would Christian Bale get that? <laughs> <he's> Batman. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, he was fantastic as my man where's the joker well i, I feel like it i feel like ben affleck took a little bit of that as well and took it to the oomph degree everybody even michael keaton if you go back even further to michael keaton when they announced back when the newspapers were like announcing michael keaton people were newspapers you know, I mean, it was the, it was the eighties. <laughs> so yeah, it was the newspapers. When it came out in the newspapers, people were like, just mad. They were mad really? as hell. Yeah. He's a comedian. He doesn't, he doesn't need to be this. He's this, whatever. So, I mean, like every Batman has gotten it, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep my comments about the new movie to myself. I know. This is, what the, this is I why say, I asked. Yeah. Cause no, I knew no, no. he so, had his feelings for it. So, so if you've seen anything with Paul Dano in it before, like, they nailed that casting hard. That's the guy. Like, as soon as I saw him in There Will Be Blood, I'm like, that's the Riddler. That's that's him. Oh my right god, there. yeah, He's that's the crazy. And they have, and, and their Commissioner Gordon is going to be great. Like he's he's yes. incredible. so good in Westworld yeah. and yeah. everything else he's done. Like I'm just I'm stoked about him. Yeah, yeah. man. Drew, anything that you're uh, uh, watching right now, keeping keeping uh, keeping you sane during uh, our quarantine months here anything Justin that Justin Stone asked if this was a Kylo Ren cup and it, it is <laughs> oh nice yeah he saw yeah. right through the glare that's awesome I just I just happen to have a first true what color Power Ranger if you could choose right now what would you be oh yeah purple oh I said Alex. orange you you be orange? Orange? Right yeah here. I want to be orange I don't know like I've seen obviously orange was used um as a make-a-wish character I don't know if you knew that uh, make a wish wrote wrote to Boom Studios. Uh, this kid who was dying and said, "Hey, I, if I was ever a Power Ranger, I would like to be the Orange Ranger and, and create one." And boom, oh, lo and behold, awesome. they created a holographic uh, Orange Ranger for him and put that's that really out cool. there. Yeah, yeah, that's I'm sick. A, yeah, I, I follow the comic books. Are you a comic book reader as well, uh, Drew, or no? Are you not? You don't follow uh, any of the comic books? I dabble. So like right now, I got the Marvel Unlimited subscription. Nice. I've been reading. I've been going back and reading like a lot of the Darth Vader comics that yeah. are very good. Yes, um, but like I grew up reading like Watchmen and Deadpool, like that kind of stuff before he was a movie star. Um, X Men, of course. 
Yeah. Oh, uh, X Men. Yeah. Like, it's it's gonna be um it's gonna be insane when they finally bring them back into the uh, into the MCU and into the fold. Uh, I'm looking forward to that, man. I just don't. I have no idea. Like they haven't made any decisions on on the next like Wolverine, Cyclops, anything. Do you have have you thought about that? You know, sitting uh, <laughs> uh, on a lonely night, thought about. Oh, I wonder who who's gonna dawn the mantle. You know, like I I honestly have no idea because and I, um, and and I love movies. I. I dabble in that and i i do film on the side but are you trying to fantasy cast the x-men right <sighs> i've been trying forever you know like listen l- look at this I'm... are we as a collective the three of us trying to collect yeah okay there he is look at this thing in the classic suit yeah you know this is the original is that 19- the classic suit this is I the brown a, one was technically the, the classic suit. this is an original no, 1994 that's, a, that's right the, yeah 90s 90s costume yeah so to me it's the classic it's yeah animated it's the ju- it's the jubilee adjacent the jubilee yeah. <laughs> and i got di- i got this one as well you know the weapon x from the from the uh oh, from sick. The, nice on the storyline of the apocalypse you know like nice. I, i'm i'm just a child also off screen this is not going to be in on on uh on the broadcast guys you can't see this but i i saw <laughs> I saw you, Austin, pick something up before, right? The 24-7 title. I was like, fuck it. If we're all picking up titles, right? You know, um, might as well pick up mine, too. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, you're one of those guys. No, 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 no. I don't no. think I can be on the show now. No, I think no, now no. I can't be on the show. I, Not I one of the... Trouble. It wasn't Like, one... out of all the titles you're going to pick up, that's the one you're going to pick up while we're both on here? You're going to pick up that the tin other... foil piece of... The wow. Actual, the actual... Hey, wow. The actual wow. title. The actual, wow. the, it's not a world championship until it's defended overseas. The, <laughs> the actual, that's, that's I'm I'm gonna follow it. So look at Austin. You I think me, we Cody. just lost Austin. We just lost. We lost. Oh, oh my god, that's oh. fantastic! I heard a shot. I don't know. Did you guys hear that or was that outside? Oh, wait, he's the, he's the he's the other champ. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! But no, I do Whew. have I do have the good ones. By the way, the good ones. Uh, classic, How do you define the good ones? Classic, old school, Stone Cold. You got a spinner? No, the spinner. Oh God, sold that twice. Um, I have, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I have them, I have them in storage because we're, we're looking to buy a new house. So like, I got that cruiserweight title? title. Where is it? That's a good, uh, good question. I only like the original. That Speaking w- of that the WC, that, no, no, not the, not the purple one. <laughs> you don't like the purple one? Uh, it, it wasn't. You might have to end this interview. Oh, Jesus, real. I'm a cruiserweight fan. When Yo, you guys that when, belt is name sick. five cruiserweights. When you guys brought out, when you guys brought <laughs> Braun out, Strowman. Braun, yeah, Braun, Nailed freaking, it. you know, when you guys, brought, when I heard about two hundred five live, I was there after SmackDown every single time. It was, it, was, I thought to myself, this is it. Then they integrated you into Raw, and I was like, okay, can we like spread this out a little bit more? Because I want to see more guys jump into the fold. You know what I'm saying? And then after a couple months, I'm like, where's everyone at? You know, like you're well, saying when the cruiserweights were on Raw. Yeah, yeah, no, you just it just kind of like started dwindling a little bit. I start I started seeing less of you guys, and then it was just more of like um of putting everyone in in different spots, and this guy's going here, and this guy. I don't know. It was just I'm not I I, I can't talk creative because I'm not I'm never I'm never gonna be in their shoes. But I I personally again, and I'm gonna put this out there, there has to be more light shined on you and less on underground stuff. You get what I'm saying? I know. Okay. Don't say anything. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like it just does. There have to be, <laughs> you know. Just in you a know. perfect world, shouldn't everybody want that? Go on the ground? No, I mean like spot. Oh yeah. no, stuff. I know. Yeah, I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, no. I'm just. I'm just saying. Can't we like, just want the show to be good? Yeah. I, yes. I oh. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd and like to just... keep getting a paycheck. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Please keep watching. <laughs> No, as the um, it's it's always on every Monday night, regardless of what I'm doing. You get, the show's always on, so um, I'm I'm that's something that's never gone away. I've I'm still a wrestling fan, um, and I even though I don't talk a lot about it with Austin, because I feel like why am I gonna talk about work with Austin? You know what I'm saying? Uh, and bring that stuff up. I'm still a huge wrestling fan, and I still watch it every Monday, every Friday. I it's DVR because I'm on with Austin every Friday night on Into the Morphing Grid at 9 p.m. Um, so yeah. 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 So um, now, Drew, you are you doing straight gaming on Twitch, or are you doing shows? Like, how is this? Uh, what are you yeah. doing on there? Like, so my you know. my, bo- my boy uh, Adam actually talk- told me about like Twitch and like what to do. And I was like, I don't know. I don't want to get into it. It doesn't seem like me. But like, I I found out that the PS4 was compatible 
with Twitch. I was like, you know what? We're stuck in quarantine. Um, I'm going to get on to it. I'm going to try it out. And like, I did some research and they said, the biggest thing with Twitch is being consistent with your broadcast. So I was like every night at 11 o'clock, <laughs> which is like after prime time, you know, but like, that's what I did. I did that for a month straight just to kind of like get acclimated. I used the PS4 camera. It worked fine. Yeah, um, it does. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I met a ton of people. There's some people actually in the chat now who were, who were, who found me on that, um, stream. And like, I would just play different games. Like, I did, uh, was it Wednesday? It was like Adventure Night. It wound up becoming Winch Wednesday because there's nice. winches in Uncharted 4. Uh, I did Scary Ass Sunday for Sundays. I'd play like a scary game. I did um, Resident Evil 3 and some other ones there. I did, oh, I did uh, Observer. It was like a sick game that I found mm-hmm. out with a bunch of really cool games. Uh, Blair Witch was another one that was pretty sweet. Um, yeah, just every night I would stream that kind of stuff. And then I found out that you could do chats like much like we're doing now and i did that on saturdays i would just catch up with my friends like during the quarantine and we called it with gabin with gulak nice so i do that on saturdays and then friday nights i found out i could watch wrestling matches on like whatever streaming service i want and channel that through and then have myself on there and as a coach you know to daniel bryan and several other wrestlers all throughout the year i figured why not give insight into like the techniques going on in the ring and like the stories behind these matches little coach's corner yeah yeah it's so the coach's corner on friday nights yeah so you know a little tidbit about that um so i caught you one night uh watching this old school match uh you were telling everyone you know what you were watching what was going on and everything and i'm and i you know austin and i have been trying to figure out how we can pretty much um commentate over power ranger footage like we do watch alongs <laughs> that's cool. and and i've been trying to blast my head over it like not trying to get like uh kicked out from twitch you know because yeah. of the dmca so um it was cool to see that because then it kind of like honestly it inspired me i was like hey i i think i'm just gonna throw it up there um i see a lot of other people kind of just like doing it in, in a safe way so yeah um i think that's pretty cool uh are you allowed to touch on current stuff or is it just because i only caught that one so, so are you, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think as a rule, uh, because it's available on the WWE Network, I will promote the heck out of WWE's product, but I will not take their footage and show it on my channel. Correct, right. Um, I, I think that's disrespectful. So I try to stick to the stuff that I watch like when I'm studying for training. Like that's usually how I group it. Or if I have friends on the independents, um, I follow independentwrestling.tv, which is mm-hmm, like the mm-hmm. number one place for you to watch independent wrestling. Tons of my matches are on there. I'm friends with the owner of the website, so I promote the heck out of it. He has me stream footage in there all the time. And then we give out codes, promotional codes. You guys can use a code in the chat right now if you want. Uh, independentwrestling.tv, uh, use the code BEYOND in all caps or the code Big Utes in all caps, which is B-I-G-Y-O-O-T-S. Either of those codes will get you a free week trial nice. of independentwrestling.tv. And there's, there's, I can't tell you how much wrestling is on there. But they got everything from like Big Japan Wrestling to Beyond Wrestling to CZW to Chikara to like it, just the gamut of independent wrestling. So I'll just pop in there and, and put some footage on and we'll talk about it. Or I'll highlight a wrestler that's like a friend of mine that people yeah. wouldn't know about. Yeah, we've had ruckus night, like just like I was telling you about, like ruckus. Yeah, yeah. The guys flipping around. So we did a whole day just dedicated to his matches. Uh, I'll throw World of Sports on because a lot of that footage is up on Oh, my YouTube. God, yeah. Uh, Old watch that pretty school. frequently. Yeah, I'll watch some, um, some like, Sendai Girls or, or Gaia Pro Wrestling, like, like early 90s, kind of late 80s stuff. Every generation. Yeah, were you a fan of uh, Glow on Netflix? And, and, you know, I saw that there was a lot of um, coaches in there, you know, who helped the girls out. Um, was, it, was it legitimate for you when you were watching these actors in the ring perform these I- moves? I thought it was uh, extremely tastefully done. Nice. Um, there, I could, I could actually see, based on how some of them were moving in the ring, like how they were taught, mm-hmm. and like there were times when I was like, oh, I wish they would have showed them this way differently, you know, like that kind of thing. Um, just little details, like how they would hit the ropes, or, or how they would base for falls, or how you would kind of assist each other on lifts or throws, and stuff right. like that. There's very there's proper ways to do it, and then there's ways that have kind of infiltrated wrestling through the years, um, just being taught incorrectly. And like those are the things where I was like, ah, come on. But otherwise, I thought nice. they were super respectful of pro wrestling. I think you know, uh, as a as a, they weren't like this is fake that kind of thing. They didn't even touched on that honestly. And, right. Um, well, a lot of the backstage great, interviews. Yeah, a lot of the backstage interviews saw the the girls kind of like or the women um really uh praise the sport and like how you know tough it is and how yeah. they were you know 
get, taking these bumps and getting hurt and in the ring, but continued going no matter what because they wanted to really be authentic in what they were pro uh, projecting towards us as as a viewer. Um, getting into the into WWE, was there someone that you kind of like? I don't want to use the word idolized, but that you really enjoyed watching and and you saw through the years that you kind of met up with once you were in WWE that kind of took you back. I mean, everyone. Like, who was in that locker room when I got there, who had been there for more than, like, 10 years. Yeah. Someone who I grew up watching. You know, we were in the locker room with Chris Jericho, Kane, The Undertaker, John Cena. Like, John Cena, Cena would sit and watch every episode of 205 Live. I heard about that. SmackDown. Yeah. He would sit backstage and just watch him. And he would just give us all pointers as soon as he oh, walked dude. out, if we wanted him. Like, nah, gets... we're good. We're good, John. <laughs> Thank it's you. funny because Cena gets a lot of flack for a lot of things, but that was one of the cool things, I feel like. Even on house shows, like... He would have his match and then he would go back. He'd shower, clean off. Sometimes he wouldn't even do that. He would just go sit down and he would watch everybody's matches. Mm -hmm. And then he would ask you like, hey, what did you see out there? What it was? And he was, and then if you wanted his opinion, he would tell you what he would have done with the story or what you can do. Like he was always there to help everything. Before every show, like before I would go out for pre-show for house shows, he would always pull me aside and go, all right, you've already looked at the audience out there. What do you see? And I'm like, all right, well, I saw that most of the shirts were from the Attitude Era. Um, I saw that, uh, there was very few kids out there. It was mostly adults. Um, we we're definitely in a plate. I don't see very many new shirts and the new shirts that I see aren't like, there's a, maybe a couple like shield shirts or Roman. I'm like, so he's like, so what does that mean? I was like, so this is a house that's based like it's, they're not completely informed on the newer stuff. So I need to educate them a little more when I'm out there doing my pre-show stuff. Or if I go out there and I see a lot of newer shirts, I see all that stuff, then I can kind of be a little more broad and have, like pull them in. Cause they already know the storylines. Um, so it's almost like I have to do a little more storytelling out there for the audience as well. But he was, he was great in that stuff. So I would say from a wrestler's perspective, noticing that in the audience, you would have a more serious uh, competitive wrestling match as opposed to one that actually like inter interacts with the audience as much um, because you're dealing with like hardcore wrestling fans yep. who've been around for the years you know, yep. they're there to see it see the action already they've already and and not so much up to speed on the storylines like you said which is something you always have to establish as a wrestler as a performer but like that changes how you wrestle in front of an audience is based and like eddie guerrero had his own method of doing it he would do it he would just listen to the sound and if the pitches were higher he would know it was mostly kids. He would know like, that's how I'm going to play it. So if it was a lower, like more of a roar, it's like mostly older guys out there. So I'll play like more to that type of an audience. There's different ways to like gauge crowd psychology and stuff like that. But, that's um, amazing. John, I never thought cool, about it cool that to, way. It's cool to hear it from an announcer's perspective because you literally have to go out there and tell them the stories and inform them and kind of like keep them up and keep the house going. Like that's such a cool perspective to hear that from, especially yeah, from like, a conversation with John. That's really neat. Yeah, it's it, and it's weird to have that conversation with him because you wouldn't think that he thinks about those things, but he literally thinks about everything from the time the person buys the ticket all the way to the end, from the merch sales, all that stuff. Like he's literally thinking about all those things. So he'll like he'll even watch our merch sales and stuff. And he's like, "Hey, that was wow. really good. I think you pushed that one too much. Like you pull this one back." And then he'll check the merch sales at the end and be like, "Never mind, I was wrong. You did a great job." <laughs> but like he's he was really cool about that. But like I could go out there and like I would know like if I was like hey how's it going or if i put over a superstar and they were just like this it was one of those like theater audiences where they just kind of like oh cool all right cool but they're not like super crazy like they're not gonna like they're not gonna be the fans are like you suck or any of that <laughs> stuff like it's crazy like you can really tell that like certain parts of boston like i remember having my first show in boston and like the first time i walked out in the crowd or the walked into the ring one of the guy goes you suck i slept with your mom <laughs> congratulations yeah I like, guess. that's gross i'm sorry for you oh god that's hilarious <laughs> like i don't just it, like there's certain audiences you know that you're gonna get heckled like certain places and like i'll yeah. give it back in some places and some places you know that it's fun and they want to play along and they're there it's theater like it's basically a form of theater and like the yeah. audience is involved in it um but it, it was cool to see that john uh just from seeing him on tv but like and then seeing him like coach people and like walk them through and give them ideas and also on my end how much he knew and understood and how invested he was in that was really really cool yes real cool uh we got about five minutes but i wanted to ask this question that's been been asked a couple times and i skipped over it hey drew uh you ever thought of coming Hi. to nxt and uh bring a fight over to timothy thatcher thatcher timothy thatcher, thatcher. he's he's someone who i fought like a ton on the independent scene 
uh, he broke out in Evolve um, 2014 or 15 after crashing on my couch for a month. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah. But the way I met Tim was for a show called the Wrestling Cares Association, which was promoted by Les Thatcher. And uh, no relation to Tim. But Tim's from Tim's from the West Coast in Cali and Sacramento, and I'm from Philly. Oh, weird. So like, there's no way we would have crossed unless we were transported one way or the other. And I got flown out. It was one of my first times getting flown out for a show uh, to California. And I wrestled him in this tournament in a 10 minute time limit Iron Man submission only match. Wow. And uh, I remember the first time we wrestled, he had this like British coat, and I had like this American colonial coat. So we like we brought our coats and we stood opposite each other. And Les called it the Battle of Bunker Hill. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> yeah, and it was the first time I wrestled Tim. And it was like everything I, I, I hoped it would be. And uh, after that, he came and stayed with me on the East Coast. We had a couple more matches for Evolve and FIP. Um, and after that, he just got booked regularly through Evolve. So we fought all the time. He was my main rival all throughout my Evolve That's career. That's awesome. Yeah, our, uh, our, ult- our, pe- our ultimate match was the uh, Squared Circle of Survival, which was like a no rules, no ropes match. Um, where we wound up tearing the canvas apart and fighting on the boards and then taking the boards apart and fighting on the steel beam. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, it's brutal. I think Evolve 72, if you want to look that up. I don't know if it's available on YouTube at all, but it should be on the network at some point too because Evolve just struck a deal with them. Yeah, I hope so. Um, that would be cool to have all that archive yeah. footage in there. But uh, yeah, I've seen what Tim's been doing in the NXT. I'm not impressed. I feel like... <laughs> I, I am not impressed, and I know it's not him to blame fully for it, but partially to blame for it. And uh, if I was down the, down there, over there, if I was over there at, at Full Sail right now, I would be calling him out and uh, telling him to get his act together because he is not living up to the legacy that he's left. Uh, on I like the it. Scene. I like it. I like that. I got to say, you know, it's um, when we were in uh... – what was it? It was Philly. We went to, I got to see you at the Evolve show. Oh, cool. Was really, that was actually really cool when, um, what day? What was it? It was like an anniversary or what yeah, was that? It was their 100th show. It was the 100th show. That's what it was. I, I, it was really cool because like I don't come from a, a wrestling like background as far as like I watched, but I was never like in the scene. Like I never went to the, yeah. I'd gone to a couple shows here and there, but I didn't really understand all of it until, you know, I, I kind of stepped behind the the curtain, but it was really cool to see the differences between a show like that and the shows that, you know, I, cause I stepped right into WWE. So it was one of those things where I never got to see any of the other yeah. stuff. So now I'm like retroactively going backwards and seeing all these things. And so cool to see it from a different perspective. And I was like, I remember your, the whole catch point thing and stuff. So it was cool <laughs> to actually see that, like there and you had this entrance and it was just cool to see all those guys that like bust their ass over there and they're doing you know they're doing their thing and it just i just it, it's such a cool community of like different um territories i guess you could still call them yeah and, mm-hmm. and everybody has their own thing and they're doing different stuff and it's just it's just it's fucking cool man it's it really it's is really cool to see all that stuff i had so much fun and being in the old ec dub arena was like that just, put the yeah. icing on the cake. That, yeah. that was really cool. And, I, and you know, like you said, I really hope, you know, I know you said they struck a deal and I'm hoping that they put them in. I think the WWE Network itself is <clears throat> is is doing um, a service to wrestling worldwide yeah. when, when you think about it, because, you know, why wouldn't you want to learn if you're a fan about what was coming up in the past and what's good now and all these wrestlers deserve a, sh- a little shine and like an evolve and whatnot, you know, just put them on there. I think right. I think it's a gateway. I, I don't know. So, um, I it's a gateway I, drug. I have it. You know, been having it since the beta days. Um, last question that I have for you, man, is um, supposedly tonight with one minute left, um, we should be getting the uh, the PS Five. Are you uh, are you uh, thinking about dropping some dimes on the PS Five or what? Yeah, I can't wait. Um, I, Xbox or PS Five? I'm gonna have to get both. Because I've Ooh. recently become like a huge Xbox gamer. I got my controller right here. Uh, playing with the pass on um, on the PC. I've been hooked up to the PC. But yeah, uh, this is the first time I think in my life that I'll be able to actually get Both. whatever console I want when it comes yeah. out. Um, even the Switch. Like I had to wait like a year or <laughs> months or whatever before it came out. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for it. I I don't know. Growing up, it was always about like... I'd get the magazine and I'd be like, oh, yes. cool. Maybe one day I will be able to play these. And then six months later, I'd be able to play it. Or I'd get the birthday present where it's like the one game. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so like it's yeah i'm excited for both consoles for the ps5 for the xbox um yeah i'm excited to like see how that all unfolds i know i know for a fact too like when consoles launch it's going to take a little while for everything to kind of catch up and settle yeah. in so like there's really no there's no reason to do it other than like to say that you've done yeah it. <laughs> yeah well the the xbox one s uh the old digital version of the x or whatever it is uh that dropped today it kind of looks like an old school uh radio with a speaker yeah. on it that you could just want to turn sideways and walk around with you know a <laughs> box a fridge yeah it looks a like a boom box the yeah one. all of them all all at once but listen i had a great time i have a million other questions and i'm hoping that yeah. one day austin could bring you back you know sure. um, yeah, he can summon me he can bring me back <laughs> yeah you know, <laughs> you know Come out of the ether. <laughs> you know, I know you're. Uh, you guys are very busy. Uh, I respect everything you've done <laughs> in and out of the ring, and 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 in the future of whatever you uh, decide you want to do, with exactly. with what we mentioned before. Um, a- any projects or anything you want to plug in before we we get? Yeah, off where the can air? they find you? Yeah, I mean, right now. So everyone, thanks for checking me out. If you're new to who I am, what I do, you can watch me Friday nights on SmackDown, which is on Fox, which is the same network that features The Simpsons. I wrestle on that same TV station sometimes. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So check me out there. Um, if you want to hang out with me on Twitch, it's twitch.tv slash Drew Gulak. Uh, D-R-E-W-G-U-L-A-K. It rhymes with the tech. Same on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you very much for sticking with us for the interview. I appreciate you very much. Well, thank, and thank you, uh, Mr. Austin. Anything you want to plug before you go? I know you got uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Grounded Pod and and whatnot anything this week that you're looking forward to that you're doing any more jackbox Ah. games i don't know you're a busy man yeah i'm all over the place uh you can catch me on monday nights total opposite night on the usa network i don't even know what's uh what is that Uh, nikita yeah yeah yeah, Yeah, yeah. yeah. i was gonna say (laughs) silk stockings wow right after same same network as mortal Kombat show right wasn't that on there too that was oh was it i think that was tnt yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) Um, (laughs) i'll be there and then uh grounded pod a new episode's coming out on the 13th and we got the director of the movie terrifier damien leone so that's cool he dropped some cool stuff on that awesome uh so that'll be available and of course i'm on here now uh be i I gotta get it right beyond rome that's what it is now beyond it's totally different it's throwing me off but I'll get used to it. Yeah. Yes. And as far as for me, um, Steve will be back again on Thursday. He should be. Uh, he's just texting me from forty thousand feet up in the air, saying if the show went well, so I'll text him back. Uh, he says thank you, Drew. Thank you, uh, yeah. Austin, for coming on the show. He's really thankful of, of that. And um, this Thursday, I forgot to mention this. This Thursday, we're gonna have uh, um, from Power Rangers playback, Catherine Sutherland and Nakia are going to be on the show as our guests. So if you guys are big fans of Pink and Yellow Ranger, well, they're going to be on the show. And we're going to be able to pick their brain and see what the hell they've been up to. Uh, they're in quarantine and whatnot, you know. They're uh, they're pretty popular from what I hear uh, from back in the day. So uh, once again, thank you guys uh, for tuning in, and we will see you Thursday. Thanks again, Drew. Thanks again, Austin. Thanks, Drew. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.